Okay, can you just uh, test your sound for me really fast? Just gonna test all the equipment here. I'm screwing with you. Test, test, <laughs> test. I think that's the perfect way to start the interview right there. Well, that I'm not actually a sick pervert. I'm just a regular <laughs> internet pervert. <laughs> exactly. Today, a man comes before us, not just any man, a great man. One who dared to do an AMA on Reddit without clearing his browsing history, without creating a throwaway. He is the one and only Ken Bell. Hi, Ken. What up? Thanks for joining us. Such a joy to have you. I'm glad to be here. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. If you guys don't know who Ken Bone is, he asked a question at the presidential debate, but, but everyone became so infatuated with this man, Ken Bone. Why do you think that is? What, what, what was it that, that people just set you set him off? Well, I think it started as the, the, the debate could not have been any more negative. It was a right. bummer to watch. It made everybody want to put their head down. <laughs> and then here's this goofy guy in the front row with a cherry red sweater <laughs> and a big mustache. You know, he's kind of funny looking. And so it kind of sparked an internet meme. It was something lighthearted to grab hold of in the middle of all this negativity. On, on the next day on the internet, it was like all anyone was talking about was Ken Bone. I think the combination of your wonderful, charming looks and uh, the name itself, I mean, Bone, is, is quite a last name. And I commend you on having such a one. Is that your real last name? That is my real last Ken. name. Uh, my grandfather's name was also Ken Bone. His father's name was Bentley. His older brother's name was Oral. They had it a little worse than Oral I did. Oral Bone, no! I swear to you. No way, you have an Oral Bone in your family, Ken. We had two of them. Two Oral Bones! Do you have any plans for your son's name? Can, do we have any kind of like, uh, like, uh, what do you got in plans for your children? Do you have, do you have children? I have one and I'm not having any more. His name's Logan. He turned 13 a couple of days ago. Logan Bone. Well, oh, congratulations to him on happy 13th birthday. Is there any chance of maybe legally changing his name to something a little more entertaining, like uh, Big, Big, Big Bone, or, I mean, Oral. I can't even imagine anything. Maybe just Oral. Go back to Oral. You fulfill the family tradition. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Even <laughs> Uncle Oral goes by his middle name, David. <laughs> that's probably for the best. First of all, you definitely pull, I think you pull off the mustache a little better than me. I think you've definitely got the totes, adorbs, kind of cuddly look that everyone loves. But for me, I just kind of look more like a Mexican drug dealer, a Pablo Escobar character. I, do you have any tips? What am I doing wrong? Well, I think you look fantastic. Uh, you. Maybe uh, maybe trim it a little closer to the lips mm. and uh, let it get just a bit longer and kind of train it. To be honest with you, I don't even like the mustache. Uh, I have it because my grandfather had it, and he was one of the best human beings I ever met. Wow. And so it's kind of my nod to him. He was the original Ken Bone. God, the Bone family legacy. The, the Bone roots go deep in your family. So you're suggesting cut it a little bit closer to the lip. Yeah, I like to keep mine, you know, like right here in the fat creases of my face. The, which you, you don't the really fat have crease. Much. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. You hold on one second, okay? I'm going to clean up my stash, and I, wanna, and I want to come back, and I want you to grade it, okay? Just give me, just hold on one sec. All right, do your best to keep both sides even. Just like that. That looks fantastic. That's a big improvement already. You know what? You take the handlebars off and you look less like a criminal and more just like kind of the the bone stash. It's more, this is the bone, the bone stash stops at the fat roll, right? Yeah, like right at the, uh, right at the chub crease right here, I think. <laughs> chub crease. Well, I couldn't have said that myself but any better. Oh, who, we, who, who have we here? This is the original Ken Bone, my grandfather. That's a mustache there, folks. It's so white, I almost can't even see it. So the whole the whole thing was, the whole setup of the debate was actually interesting to me. It looked like there was maybe 20, 40 people in the room. Like, how did they vet you? No, they don't ask you anything about your questions. Once you tell them you're just, no. you're an undecided voter, that's it. They say, okay, come up with two questions and we'll see you next Sunday. But you had to like tell them your questions ahead of time. You could have been like, Trump, can, can you please tell me what, what tanner do you use and why do you avoid the space around your eyes? The only people we told the question ahead of time were Anderson Cooper and Martha Raddatz, the moderators. That's incredible. That is incredible insight. And it was live. So you actually, once you got the mic, you could have been like, Trump, can you please explain why your hands are so small? 
Yeah, I could have said anything I wanted. I mean, anything too bad. And I guess the the Secret Service guys who were hidden amongst us would have tased me or something. <laughs> just a straight up tase. Yeah. Just I mean, as punishment. They're like, look, you already asked the questions, but you're going to get tased. You need to yeah, be It's punished. live TV. There's only like a 10 second dump. So That's they gotta, amazing. They had, they had tremendous faith in all of the question askers. Uh, it was well warranted for most of us. Did you ever consider pulling a little uh, bit of a meme on the mic? I I thought about it. I'd be lying if I said I was didn't think about it. But it's the chance of a lifetime to ask a question yeah. to the next president. Yeah, absolutely. How quickly after you got home after that debate did you realize that you had become a living meme? Well, I got back out to my car where my phone was locked up. I turned on my phone and I had already missed like a thousand messages. Uh, my voice mailbox was full. I didn't listen to that for days. There's voicemails for old people. Uh, and my friend called me on the phone just as it was powering up and started reading me articles about myself from BuzzFeed, which I, I thought he was jerking my chain until I got home and saw him for myself. So this is immediately, from the time you left the debate to the time you got home, you were already a living meme. Yeah, the debate had probably been over for about 45 minutes before That's I got in the amazing. car. amazing. And you were already blown up. BuzzFeed was on that shit. Of course they were. That time it was just pure love. It was just like pure love shower like how how did that feel what was your were your reaction to that i mean it was weird because at that point you know i hadn't done any interviews hadn't done any anything so right. the whole world's exposure to me is just the sweater and the mustache right name and the one question and they thought you know oh this guy is such a cuddly teddy bear mm -hmm. and there was like this characterization of me as some kind of like saint or right or hero or and, or whatever. And little and little did they know you had looked at Jennifer Lawrence's butthole and liked it. Yeah, I mean, uh, probably I shouldn't have done that because that was a breach of her privacy. But come on, everybody did it, dude. That's you don't need to defend yourself. I am fully, dude. As I said in our previous video about you, Michelle Obama has looked at Jennifer Lawrence's butthole. You have nothing to apologize for. I'm yeah. waiting. I'm waiting for the strange like porn offers where someone. Those always end up coming with like the hundred thousand. We'll pay you a hundred thousand dollars to like have sex with a midget or some shit like that. There's been one of those. They didn't contact me directly. They just float that out there for free publicity. What was the offer? It was a hundred thousand bucks for. I don't remember what it was. I don't think it was anything weird, but it would have gotten me murdered in my sleep, so I didn't do it. Well, the fact that the offer is there just makes me happy. You didn't. I'm. I'm happy you didn't take it. Obviously, that would have. That would have been pretty strange to see you in a porn. To be frank, um, but the fact that the offer is out there is nice to know. I'm happy. Well, I don't want to subject the American people to that. I'm all about positivity and you know a good message. A good message is not me not wearing any pants. That's horrible. Well, in some. Well, yeah, in some. Some. We can find you a niche. So, as some of you may know, Ken Bone went from national treasure to most despised man in America almost in 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 almost overnight immediately as as uh, Ken went on reddit and did a ask me anything doing the fatal and classic air of not creating a separate account which has no post history on it and using his own account so everyone was able to go through all of his history and see all of his comments etc and Basically, as my favorite headline goes, social justice warrior sifted through his account history in an attempt to ruin his life. Ken, what the hell were you thinking? Well, I was naive enough to think that people weren't paying that close of attention. I've never been famous before. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how to do it. So when you, when you decided to do the AMA, you just didn't even consider making an alternate account? You didn't, you didn't even consider that people would look through your history and just try to find anything embarrassing they could. Never even crossed my mind. So that's why you're such a good, God-blessed guy. Because you, you assume the world is a good place and people are not there to try to fucking ruin your life over peeping out Jennifer Lawrence's butthole. Well, I mean, I was still answering questions. Well, I'm still answering questions right. now, 11 days later. But I was still doing the, the first session when my friend sitting next to me on his computer is like, Hey, look at this article. It says, it no. turns out Ken Bone is an awful person. I'm oh like, my oh. God. During the AMA. Yeah, like while I'm still answering questions and he's like, ah, oh, don't worry. It's not a big deal. It's just some jerk. And it was kind of a big deal though. Basically, you were a baby rapist and cannibalist as far as I heard. So I wanted to check it out. And for what I learned was that actually 
Not only was it not that bad, but you turned out to be a pretty great guy from what I saw. Oh, I am history's greatest monster, apparently. How was it? How did it feel to be like all of a sudden you're like, hey, everyone loves me. I'm going to say what up to Reddit because it seems like you're a pretty avid Redditor. Yeah, I've been on for almost two years now. And uh, to have somebody dig through my comment history and pick four or five comments of me making my dumbest, most off color comments. Right. And say that that defines me as a person. Uh, that's hurtful, honestly. The one from Gizmodo was the first. Yes. That was and, the one uh, that accused you of shaming a rape, a rape victim, right? Yeah, that one disgusted me. Uh, that one was really sad because like you went over in your original video, that's the complete opposite of what I said. They saw a, a comment thread about rape and saw me use the word disgusting, which I was actually just... referring to her rapist. Right. And uh, equated me calling that with me calling a rape victim disgusting. Yeah, and when, when bottom feeders like that do that sort of thing, you can almost let it roll off your back because they're just trying to get clicks to their worthless Gawker style websites. But when that gets picked up by a legitimate newspaper like the New York Post, yeah, and they don't vet it first, they just print it, right? That shocked and appalled me. That was, I mean, that. If I didn't already have a steady job, that could make you like unemployable. Absolutely. I, I, one of my questions for you was like, one of those, the first, like I'd say three days after you read it AMA, it seemed like you were all of a sudden America's greatest villain. And it was such a great story that everyone was talking about from online uh, news. I even saw reports of it on the television and like jokes about it on Saturday Night Live. Did it have a, a real life? effect on you was there people all of a sudden on the street were like oh it's it's that fucking guy ken bone who eats children not a single person that has approached me on the street has been negative not one that's great. and there have been thousands the only person that's been negative to me in person was a reporter hmm. uh, the very next morning about two hours after the ama was over i'm at a charity golf tournament and i've been up all night doing the ama and now I'm at this charity golf tournament for, uh, it's called Three Little Birds for Life. It's taking, taking some pictures, pictures and helping make money for, for the kids. kids. I'm not getting paid for this because it's charity. I'm not a superstar. I don't get paid for charity events. I don't want to get paid for charity events. And this reporter approaches me. She's like, do you want to clarify your position on Jer Jennifer Lawrence and Trayvon Martin? And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I had no idea what she even meant. And then she you know, kind of ambushed me with that. And I had to come up with an answer. I'm like, look, Trayvon Martin is dead, and he should be alive, and that sucks. Uh, it's a terrible situation. Uh, I wish he had not been shot. The only reason I use the word justified is because that's the word the jury used. That was one of the things that rubbed me so wrong about your whole story, was that you were just some guy that everybody loved for one reason or another. They all made you, like, obscenely famous. And then they're all like, and then they like tried to ruin your life with, in the next second. It just seems so perverted. Yeah, I didn't ask for any of that stuff. I didn't ask for everybody to think that I was an adorable, cuddly saint. Right. And I certainly didn't ask for a bunch of people to go digging through my life to try to disprove that. Right. I, I'm just a regular dude like everybody else. And once they learned that, that they were going for the throat. Right. If you could do it all over again, would you, would you do that? Would you do that new account? Would you create a throwaway? Yeah, I probably would. Just because it took away so much from like the positive message I'm trying to put out. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this big campaign about get out and vote. Right. And I'm trying to raise money for uh, the homeless shelter here in St. Louis, the mm -hmm. St. Patrick Center. And I lost probably three or four days worth of momentum right. you know, when I set my most visible. And that, that cost a lot of good that I can do. And, and, you know, it cost me personally, financially, and my reputation. You know, have you considered suing that, like, gizmo for defamation? Because it most certainly is. It's really hard to prove defamation because you have to have a big, expensive lawyer to take the case. Oh, I'm and sure have, there's, there's... And you have to be able to prove financial damages, which would be difficult. You said you lost some uh, momentum in trying to do good things in the world. And I, I'd like to help you pick that up. Uh, is there a place where we can donate to help out the homeless charity that you're trying to promote? Uh, if you just uh, Google St. Patrick's Center, I think they're at stpatrickcenter.com. They're the charity that I partner with the most, uh, that I've given most of the money to. 
St. Patrick's Center, guys. I will put the link in the description. If you want to support Ken Bone and support the homeless and counteract this ridiculous defamation that's gone on and this ridiculous journalism, help support Ken, help support the homeless. Links in the description, guys. God bless the bone. How frequently do you actually wear the sweater like for real now, now that this happened? Will you go to Ralph's, for example, go do some grocery shopping in that sweater? Well, the original sweater is locked up in my closet right now, uh, protected. Put that, yeah, put that behind glass. Yeah, it's gonna it's sell on eBay off, someday. It's, it's getting auctioned off for charity that you know, oh, people no. start seeing that in the next few days. No. Uh, yeah, Where's that, that gonna that, happen? That's going 100% to charity. Uh, I don't I'll keep anything from the sweater sale. Uh, I wonder how much money that's going to fetch. What, do, you, do you have any hunch? Well, I had it basically sold for $10,000. Yeah, the, those people backed out because of the uh, the nastiness from the media. Damn! So, so congratulations, uh, Gizmodo. You accomplished two things. You made my wife cry, and you cost the homeless $10,000. I hope you feel good. Fucking staring at Gizmodo right now. Shame on you guys. Have they ever apologized? Has anyone from the media apologized to you? People like that don't apologize. They just move on to the next story and hope you forget about it. So if you could choose to to go to that debate or not, you would still choose to go to that debate. Same that bring this bring the same sweater. Do it all again. I yeah. If I had to choose between not doing it and doing it all exactly the same way, I'd still do it. What, what is it you want to tell people watching this video? Is there something you want to promote, something you want to convey to people? What is your final thought? For the next two weeks, it's all about getting everybody out to vote. Thousands of people are asking me, who are you going to vote for? I've made a decision. I'm not telling anybody. I don't want you to vote for who I think you should vote for. There's plenty of people telling you who to vote for. You just go vote. Make your voice heard. Spark the debate about what you're passionate about. For me, it was energy. For you, it might be health care or roads or schools or LGBT rights, whatever it is. Spark the debate. And when our voices come together like that, the government hears it and they have to work for us. You're yeah. voting for Gary Johnson, aren't you? I can tell. It's Gary, it's that Gary, it's Gary Johnson's got your vote, didn't he? I will, I will vote for either Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump because that's they're the everyone. only four that, that doesn't have, That's all of them. Well, there are 1,972 others, <laughs> but those are the only four that can well, mathematically win. I've been urging all of our viewers to write in a humongous bone for President VP. Have you, have you officially accepted your role as vice president on that ticket? Because I think you guys may actually end up getting more votes than, say, Jill Stein. I am polling ahead of Jill Stein in Florida as of today. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not actually old enough to be president or vice president. Uh, I'm no, only we'll 30 make an amendment. No, no, no. We'll, we will amend the Constitution to get you in office. Don't worry about that. Uh, yeah, if, if elected, I will serve. But if you want to write my name in, if you want to write in the humongous bone ticket, and that gets you out to the polls to vote in these congressional elections and vote for mayor and city council and bond issues and dog catcher, if you're involved in all that just because you want to get out and write my name in, then do it. If that helps you get involved, do it. You heard it here, folks. Humongous bone for President VP. That's what I've been saying. This is the most important message we can out get. Get out, guys. Write it in. I'm really looking forward to tweeting out how many votes I got, despite the fact that I've been begging people not to vote for me. <laughs> Humongous bone. Don't listen to Ken Bone. Vote for Ken Bone. We will amend the Constitution and we will do whatever it takes to get this man in power. Ken Bone, thank you so much. We appreciate you spending the time to come. Enjoyed. Such a pleasure. I think you're a great guy and your message is wonderful. I couldn't agree more. Guys, follow Ken Bone on Twitter. I'll put it right here on the screen in the description. Donate to the homeless shelter, his charity. It's going to do a lot of great good. Your net change on this world is a positive one, Ken. And we appreciate you here at H3H3 Productions. And uh, we wish you all the best. Well, thanks a lot, Ethan. The way I see it, all the negative stuff, that just affects me. All the positive stuff, that's good for everybody. So I can take a little bit of, uh, a little bit of negative stuff if it helps out the community. God bless. You're a great guy, and I really appreciate you. Thanks again for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. You've been my most public defender. I love you. I love your show. <laughs> Thank you so much. You deserve all the support you can get. Thank you.